So you want to know how to buy a house. Well, I'm going to cover the 10 steps that it takes to get from the beginning to the end of the process. Hey there, I'm Heather Evers, a realtor in Norman with Century 21. If this is the first time you're visiting me, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'm going to be posting new videos on Thursdays and you won't want to miss out. Step number one when you're ready to go buy a house is to get pre-qualified. I need you to call your bank or a lender that you've chosen and have them get you a pre-approval for your financing. That way we know exactly how much you can spend and I don't take you to see houses that are outside of your price range. If you don't know a good lender or don't have somebody in mind, ask me. I've got lots of good references for you. Now we're at step number two. It's the fun part. We're going to start shopping homes. So first of all, I need to know what's important to you. How many bedrooms do you need? How many bathrooms? What's on your wish list? Are you really hoping for like a gourmet kitchen? Um, what are your deal breakers? Um, are you opposed to carpet? Does it have to be tile? These are things I need to know. As we start to look, I want you to give me lots of feedback about the house that we're in. Tell me what you like about it, what you don't like about it, what you foresee being a problem in this space. Keep in mind that any house we're in, you could possibly be on audio recording or even camera. So if you start to talk about this being the house that you have to have, I'm gonna body tackle you and cover your mouth. We'll have those discussions outside. Okay, now we're on to step number three, which is your offer and negotiations. So say we found the house. I need to know exactly what terms you wanna put in an offer to the seller of that house. So I need to know what you want to offer to pay. I need to know how much earnest money you're willing to put down. Earnest money is money that you put down up front to show the seller that you mean business, that you want the house. And it gets applied to your closing expenses if we go through the whole process. And um, so in that offer, we also need to include whether or not you're going to ask for a home warranty, whether or not you're going to ask for the seller to pay any of your closing costs, how soon you'd like to close. These are all items that I'm going to put in writing, and then we will submit it to the seller. So the seller at that point can either reject your offer outright, they can accept your offer immediately as it is, or they can send you a counter offer adjusting or tweaking the terms a little bit. Say you pay, you offer to pay $2.95 and they send you a counter offer saying, we'll take all your other terms, but we want you to pay $3.15. So that's a counter offer. Once you have both agreed and signed every document in our contract, then you are officially under contract with that seller. They are promising you to sell, you are promising them that you'll buy. Okay, now that we're under a contract on the house, we're gonna head on to step number four, which is your closing process. You'll also hear it called escrow. So during this period of time, your number one job is to treat every question and inquiry that your lender has like your butt's on fire. You need to be giving them everything they ask for as quickly as possible so that you can close on time. They are going to start getting a little invasive. You're gonna feel a little bit, um, maybe like your privacy is being, being violated. But these people are essentially going to front all the money for your home and then allow you to make payments. So they deserve a little insight into your financial picture. They're gonna ask you for some tax documents. They're going to ask you for pay stubs. They're gonna to wanna to know about your credit card balances. Um, just provide all this information quickly and without any delay and it'll keep you going and on track. Okay, now we're on to step number five. It's your inspection period. We have an opportunity now to go into the house with any kind of inspector that you want to make sure that the house is in a condition that you're satisfied with. I can help oversee all of that. Um, and we're not trying to make the house brand new. When we go through this process and you get your inspection report and it's four pages of tiny little cosmetic things, that is not what we're asking the seller for. We are concerned with safety issues. Is the roof in the right condition? Is there some kind of an electrical problem that is a serious fire hazard? Those are the kinds of things we're looking for. Okay, that takes us to step number six. 
Now we are going to request repairs if there are any needed. So at this point, you are going to ask the seller for anything that you want to have completed prior to closing on the house. Say there's a leaky kitchen sink, you want them to have that fixed before you close. We're going to put in writing that that is your request. So at this point, we're negotiating again. The seller can either say, sure, great, I'll fix that kitchen sink, or they can send us another counter and say, what if instead we paid $500 towards our closing cost? Or they can just say, no, I'm not repairing that. At this point, once you have both signed whatever you've agreed to, you're through with your repair negotiations. Okay, now we're at step number seven, your appraisal. So you will have already ordered and paid for your appraisal with the bank when you are doing your due diligence with them and turning in everything that you're supposed to. Um, so they will now hire a third party to go out and look at the house and make sure that it is worth the amount that they are lending towards your purchase price. If they decide that it is, then great, we're in good shape and we move on down the road. If your appraisal comes in short, and they say, you're offering to pay 315 for this house and it's only worth 290, then you have the option of either bringing the remainder of that cash to the table, or you can negotiate again with the seller to have them reduce the price to the appraised value. Okay, step number eight is your final walkthrough. We're gonna go back through the house again right before closing just to make sure that it's in the right condition. It should be in the condition that it was in, if not better, than when you saw the house and got under contract. We're gonna to look to make sure that the seller didn't change out any fixtures. Like say they had really high-end, beautiful light fixtures in the house and they've taken them all out and put in really standard fixtures. That's gonna be an issue we're gonna to want to address before you close on the house. Okay, step number nine is reviewing your settlement statement. Your bank or your lender is going to send you a final list of your expenses and exactly what you have to bring to the closing table to purchase this house. You're gonna to wanna to review it carefully, make sure everything looks like what you were expecting and ask any questions at that time. Okay, we're finally to step number 10. It is your closing day. You get to go get your house. First, you're gonna to go to the title company. You're going to take either your cashier's check for the exact amount due from your settlement statement or you will have made arrangements for a wire of funds prior to this time. You're gonna sign all the paperwork for your loan and for the transfer of ownership, and then you get your keys. That's it, our 10 steps to buying a house. I hope that you enjoyed watching. Go on over and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell too so that you get notified when I upload new videos. If you have any questions or specific topics that you want me to cover, pop it down in the comments. I'd be happy to go over those. Thanks for watching. See you next time.